All right, so toxic relationships, right? Everyone's talking about them these days. We're going up on this one. Using this Healthline article, it's got all the angles, like how do you even know if it's toxic? Can you fix it? And just so we're clear, this isn't just about romantic stuff. This is for friendships, family drama, even work. Because let's be real, toxic is toxic. Right. It can pop up anywhere. Exactly. Uh. So the article jumps right into these red flags. And some of them, honestly, I was like, wait, really? Like, have you ever felt like no matter what you do, it's never enough. You nail something big. And instead of celebrating, your partner's all focused on how they look. Oh, yeah. That lack of support. It's insidious. It's like that genuine happiness for someone. It turns into competition. And that eats away at the good stuff. You know, the, the foundation of a healthy relationship. It's wild how these little things, they can be so corrosive. Like the article, it gives this example, right? Your partner, they're always making these snide comments about your hobbies. I mean, a little playful banter, fine. But when it's constant negative, that's when it gets messy. Absolutely. You start to second guess yourself. Like, should I even like this anymore? That's not healthy anywhere. Think of it this way. Say your partner's way into like stamp collecting. Yeah. You're going to make an effort to get it. Right. Because in a good relationship, you're curious about their thing, even if you don't share it. Exactly. And that takes us to another red flag. How you talk to each other. A little sarcasm, sure. But when it's constant negative, that gets damaging. You can't even tell the difference anymore between a joke and a dig. And that's the thing, right? It creeps up on you. You don't even realize you're walking on eggshells, afraid to just be yourself. Have you ever felt that? Like holding back who you are because you're afraid of judgment? Classic sign of a toxic thing. Yeah. You're always censoring yourself. Yeah. Exhausting. Totally. And then good luck bringing up any issues, right? Which makes me think about this other point. Envy and jealousy. We all feel it. But when does it go too far? Million dollar question. It's a problem when it turns into control. Instead of dealing with their own stuff, they try to control you out of fear. So it's not about never feeling it. It's what you do with it. Right. right? Like your partner is successful. You feel a twinge. That's normal. But trying to control them, belittle it, that's a problem. Self-awareness is key. Recognize it. Deal with it. Don't make it their problem. Truth makes you wonder if you're seeing these red flags, can you even save it? Is it possible to fix a toxic relationship? The article, it does give some hope there. It does, but it hinges on some biggies. Yep. Shared responsibility, that one jumped out at me. If it's only one person doing the work, forget it. It takes two, right, to yeah. tango to fix this mess. But how do you even know it's worth it? What are you looking for? Biggest one, both people owning their part, no blame games, just, okay, we messed up, now what? That takes guts. So important, not you did this to me, but... How do we work through this together? That's vulnerability right there. And that vulnerability thing, it's scary, but man, it's powerful. The article's big on couples therapy. Thoughts? Oh, for sure. Especially when you're stuck, you know? Like having a guide to better communication. Plus, it's not just talking, right? They give you actual tools. 100%. And even outside therapy, mm -hmm. finding your people, you know, friends, family, support groups, whoever's got your back. Toxic relationships, well, they yeah. isolate you. It's like a safety net. You yeah. need that, especially when those tough conversations come up. Speaking of, the article's big on I statements. I never really got that. Yeah, it sounds kind of formal, but it works. It's shifting from blame to your own experience. Instead of, you always make me feel small, it's, I feel hurt when my hobbies are criticized. Ah, okay, I see it now. Less attacky, more about your own feelings. Right. Owning your side changes the whole game. Sounds like a lot of work, though. And honestly, fixing a toxic relationship, it's not easy. Dedication, patience, the whole shebang. No quick fix, that's for sure. Yeah. It's showing up different every day. But, and the article brings this up, sometimes it's beyond fixing. we got to talk about abuse. Right. This isn't just everyday squabble. Sometimes it's dangerous and it needs to end. The article lays out these signs of abuse, and it's not always what you think, not just hitting, though that's obviously part of it, but it can be sneaky. Do you see that a lot? People not realize. All the time. It's like it, your sense of self, it just gets worn down. So we got to talk about the other signs, being scared of your partner, being isolated, money getting controlled. Right. The article mentions diminished self-worth, feeling constantly put down, so hard to see when it's gradual. Drip, 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 until you're doubting yourself. Hard to see the water when you're the fish. Exactly. But subtle or not, it's never okay, and you are not alone. So important. You deserve safety, respect. If that's gone, you can get out. Which brings us to the hardest part, leaving. Terrifying, especially if you're isolated already. Where do you even begin? You start by remembering 
you are stronger than you believe. Yeah. You can do this. And you don't have to be alone. So for those ready to move on, what does the article say? Reach out. Tell someone. A friend, family, therapist, a hotline. Yeah. People get it. They want to help. Honestly, that is good to hear. Knowing you're not alone, that there's people who get it, makes a difference. It's about taking back your power, you know, asking mm -hmm. for help, making that move to a better life. And it's hard, but it's also a chance to learn, to grow, to have even better relationships later. I like that because it's easy to focus on the bad stuff. But yeah, there's this whole other side of healing, of new beginnings. So for people ready for that, to move on, what's the article's advice? This really suck with me, and I tell this to everyone. You deserve a healthy relationship, full stop. It's so easy to believe the bad stuff, that you don't deserve love, respect. But that's not true. You are worthy. You deserve someone who sees that. We all need that reminder sometimes, especially after being through the toxic stuff, like you forget what's normal, what's good. Totally. And that's where looking inward helps. Figuring out your own patterns, the things you're bringing to the table that need work. So asking yourself, like, why was I even attracted to this in the first place? What was missing for me? And how do I not repeat this? Yes. It's about growth. You see the pattern, you break the pattern. Setting boundaries, knowing your worth, not settling for less. This whole conversation's been eye-opening. Red flags, abuse, getting help. But for me, the biggest thing is that hope. It's tough to leave, but you can. And on the other side, there's healing. There's good relationships waiting. 100%. It takes guts to face this stuff, but you're not alone. Help is out there. So wrapping up this deep dive, remember, knowledge is power. You've got the info, the resources, and most importantly, the strength to build the love you deserve. That's it for today, but keep the conversation going. Keep learning, keep questioning, keep building those healthy relationships.